I'm a Christian and I strongly disagree with this. A loving God would never let anyone unwillingly be tricked into hell. Hell is merely the absence of God. All right, we got to stop right there. You guys know me. Revelation chapter 14 verse 10 literally tells us that people will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb who is Jesus, who is God. Okay. And anyone who would be in hell would be willingly and consciously rejecting God. That's also not true. Philippians chapter two tells us that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the people on Judgment Day, they're not going to be like, oh, I hate you, God. I'd rather be in hell than, you know, no, 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 no. They're going to confess, okay? They're going to be put to shame. They're going to be humbled. They're, they're going to realize their entire life that they've done evil things and they deserve death. Also, back to this first sentence, a loving God would never let anyone unwillingly be tricked into hell. Well, I mean, no one willingly gets tricked anyways. No one gets willingly lied to, you know? If someone tells you something and you believe it, it's because you want to believe it, right? When the devil told Adam and Eve, oh, you're not going to die, just eat from this tree, right? Adam and Eve, they wanted to believe that. Eve wanted to believe that. And again, Romans chapter 8 even tells us clearly that creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him, that's God, who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption and to the freedom of the glory of the children of God. This is all for God's glory. Yes, God let humans fall into sin for a good purpose for God's glory. Second Thessalonians chapter two also tells us that God is going to let the man of lawlessness rise up. And Paul even writes here that it's God who sends upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in unrighteousness. So God, of course, is not the deceiver, but he does let the devil and the man of lawlessness deceive many. The devil is God's instrument in all of this. There's nothing that the devil does or anybody does that isn't outside of God's plan and purposes. But you always have to remember Genesis chapter 50. This is one of the greatest chapters in the entire Bible. As for you, you meant evil against me. Joseph talking to his brothers when they sold him into slavery. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. All right. You meant it for evil, but God meant your evil actions for the greater good. So even when you're doing evil things, God is turning your evil actions into good. Okay. When the Jews and the Romans, they were doing evil things, terrible things, flogging and crucifying Jesus. God meant for all of those things to happen for good. The greatest good of all time, which is the redemption of humanity for God's glory.